Hi, Johar. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're so lucky to have you. Thank you so much for having me, Hagar. Uh, it's an honor to be here speaking with you today. The honor is ours. For everyone listening, Johar Ilham is the daughter of a prominent and renowned Uyghur scholar who promoted coexistence in Xinjiang, China, where the Uyghur minority live. And his daughter, who I am so lucky to have here, Johar Ilham, is based in the United States and she champions the right of the Uyghurs, their cause, and I'm gonna let and and of course of her father's. And I'm gonna let her tell his story and her story. So Johar, why don't you tell why don't you start with the story of your father, please? Hello everyone. My name is Johar Ilham. I am the daughter of Ilham Tohti, the um uh, jailed Uyghur uh, scholar. Um, my father is a well-known Uyghur economist who is now serving a life sentence in China um, for, as, as Hagar mentioned earlier, for simply for uh, fostering dialogue between the Han Chinese and the Uyghur people, and also for advocating respect for religious and culture belief uh, of, of our people and for equal opportunities in, in pursuing our dreams and, of course, the things that motivate us. Um, the last time I saw my father was 2013, February 2nd, at the Beijing International Airport. Um, we were forced to be separated. Uh, I wasn't planning to come to the United States for, uh, I wasn't planning to stay here for more than three weeks. Uh, my father was invited by Indiana University as a visiting scholar. And uh, I was just planning to accompany him uh, to, to help him settle down and I would go back home after, after, after three weeks and continue my studies in Beijing. But at the airport, he was stopped and I was a teenager. Um, so I appeared to have no threat to, um, and I appeared to have no threat to the um, security, security officials over there. And they allowed me to leave, but they stopped my father. And that was the last time I saw my father he was forced to stay at our apartment for 11 months. So basically house arrest for 11 months until January 15th, 2014, actually just um, uh, about two weeks ago, less than two weeks ago, it was his seven years anniversary for his detention. Um, he was officially taken away from our apartment in Beijing. And the day before that was the last time I spoke with my father on the phone. Today, I don't know where my father is held at. I don't know, he has been transferred to another prison. I don't know if he is doing well, if he is healthy. I don't know if he's even alive because family visits are no longer allowed. Even though according to the Chinese law, um, every political prisoner are supposed to be, is supposed to be visited, allow, be allowed to be visited by their family members every month. Uh, from 2014 to 2017, the government allowed my family to visit him every three months, which was supposed to be illegal. And now the three month visiting rights are also, were also taken away. Um, we don't know what his current condition is. Oh, that's just terrible. And so that's, I assume that's what's led you now to be fighting for uh, his cause, for his freedom, um, for the freedom of others. Can you tell us a little bit about your work, you know, and what, what your main motivation, your goal is? I'm a little bit ashamed and embarrassed to having to admit this. Um, I did not uh, advocate for the Uyghur's rights until um, about 2018. I was very strict with myself. I was very careful with what I say. I only spoke out uh, on behalf of my father and only advocated for his release until 2018. That was a time I started seeing more and more evidence on what is happening now. Maybe a lot of your uh, 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 audience might have heard of the concentration camp. Um, I started reading about it and then I realized more and more of my family members in China have blocked me or disappeared or stopped com contacting me. And that was the time I realized this is not about one single case anymore. It's not only about my father's case anymore. This is a time about the entire Uyghur community. And that was a time I knew that it's not okay to stay silent on this anymore. It's not a okay to just focus on my dad's case anymore. So I decided to 
uh, speak up and to advocate for, for, for the rights of the Uyghur people. And my, my, to, be on, to be honest, my, my purpose is very, very simple, very, very pure. I just want that the, red, like the Uyghurs and other ethnic minorities who are locked up uh, for the wrong reasons can be released and for them to have the same uh, rights, uh, equal opportunities, just like the majority Han Chinese people who are living in China. That's the only thing I request from the Chinese government. But even such simple requests like this, the Chinese government wouldn't grant it uh, to, to us. Well, hopefully your work will yield results. I'm sure it will. Uh, you are doing, as we say, yeoman's work. Um, can you can you explain a little bit why was the Chinese government so threatened by your father's work when all he was doing was preaching coexistence? I don't work in the Chinese government uh, in the Chinese government, and I'm I've never uh, been directly in touch with any of those Chinese government officials, so I can't speak on behalf of them. And these are just my guesses, my own assumptions. Uh, first of all, um, as many of you may know already uh, that social media platforms like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram are all banned in China and searching engines like Google, it's also banned. News channels, um, Western news channels, they're all not allowed. In order to search anything that is overseas, you will have to cross the firewalls, which is technically illegal to do that in China. You could, uh, you'd, you could end up being imprisoned for doing that. And um, so that, that said, which me, that means that the, the news that are exposed to, to the Chinese citizens are very selective uh, and it's very biased a lot of the times. Um, and and the, the only source people have for, for the truth is or for, for, for the outside, for information of where they're living at. It's the CCTV, which is the Chinese uh, government controlled the news channel. And um, to be fair, I, I was born and raised in Beijing. I spent 18 years there. Um, and that was the news that I grew up listening to. And, and that's all I had access to. And that's what I, what I believed in growing up. But after coming to the US and having access to media uh, outlets from all over the world, I learned that not everything I learned when I was in China were, tr were the truth. Um, including for for uh, information about the Uyghurs, um, many many people who are um, living in China don't know too much about the Uyghurs. Um, the only information they have was from the state-backed media, and most of them are usually very negative. Uh, and Uyghurs are often portrayed as thieves, uh, pickpockets, and uh, power uh, people live in poverty and non-educated. Um, and people who just like dancing and singing. Um, even, if, even if you see now the Chinese propaganda videos, people, uh, the, the government would still portray us as we, they're living in happy life by making us dance and singing the videos. Um, well, Uyghurs, Uyghurs do like dancing and, and, and singing, but we don't do it 24 hours, seven days, not like what, what's shown in the video. Um, so my father wanted to create a platform for people to to have access to the real information. Anyone could post um, could post and share their ideas. Um, my father made sure that he purchased the server from the United States so the Chinese government wouldn't have access to censor the information from the website. And uh, he wanted to provide this platform for people to exchange ideas and to learn about the history and culture and the uh, political situation of the Uyghurs. Um, they wanted, uh, my father wanted, the Han Chinese know why the Uyghurs are uh, living the way they are and who are the Uyghurs and uh, basically just, you know, introduce them. Even though we're living in, we're, we're living in the same country, but the Uyghur region, it is very, very far away from the mainland China. And most of the Han Chinese have no idea, no idea how we are like. And um, my father once told me that if you don't know about each other, all the hate uh, exists from not knowing the other side. And um, if you don't know about each other, you will always think the other side is the evil other side. And that's what I want to prevent. And that was my father's purpose. But 
that threatened the Chinese government, I believe, um, and uh, showing people the truth were, was not something the government desired. Um, my father also, as I mentioned, he's a, he was a well-known economist. He did research as he traveled to countries and cities all over, all over the world to, uh, to, to, to do uh, research on how uh, different uh, religious groups can, uh, uh, can coexist peacefully. Hey, and he realized, that, he realized that people with different religion and cultural background can exist peacefully, coexist peacefully. And he wanted that for the Han Chinese and the Uyghur people as well. Um, and he proposed some ideas to the Chinese government, but government uh, officials had considered my father's ideas and suggestions as critiques and, um, and thought of my father's action was challenging the authorities' uh, power. But what my father was trying to do was simply help the government to develop the region and help the Uyghur people to have what they deserve. If only we could have that everywhere. I mean, I think that the truth hurts, right, for these governments. And I think a lot of governments are afraid of, A, the truth, and, and B, if we, could, if we could only have more people who, who could explain that if we knew more about both sides of any group, that, that we could all live a bit more peacefully. Um, well, I'm thinking of him. Can you, you know, the Trump administration last week declared that the Chinese government was committing genocide against the Uyghurs, which is a very, which is a strong declaration. This is an important one. Can you tell us um, how important is this declaration and uh, what is the follow-up that you hope will happen after? Are you in touch, for example, with the Biden administration? Um, and do you think they'll follow up on this declaration? Um, first of all, the, the recent uh, atrocity determination was really welcomed by the Uyghurs. Uh, in the diaspora, um, and it's, it was as a recognition of the severity of the repression and um, um, that was unfolding, that has been unfolding in the Uyghur region. And uh, in my perspective, I think the term genocide perfectly described the abuses that the Chinese government uh, government have been doing and in the in the Uyghur region. And I think there isn't a better word for it to to, to describe such actions and i really do hope that this um can um create a positive domino effect around the globe can bo can boost more countries to join and 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 to to you know uh together support this cause and together to to hold china accountable and um i haven't been uh, in uh, personally in touch with the upcoming administration um, I do plan to do that, and uh, I do hope that the Biden administration can uh, continue um, uh, put this uh, uh, put the Uyghur issue as uh, top of their uh, agenda for 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 his term for his term while he was he is while he is the president, and um, doesn't matter how many presidents changes and how many leaders changes how many administration uh, you know or who who is in charge the Uyghurs are still suffering and the Uyghur situation hasn't changed yet. I, I hope that the um, upcoming administration can um, put this on the, as their one of their top priority uh, list. Um, and, 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 and also uh, doesn't matter who is in charge of the uh, government, who is the president who, and who, who is ruling the, the new administration, and it doesn't matter how much change uh, there is around the world, the Uyghur situation hasn't been changed yet. Uh, Uyghur people are still suffering. So I urge the, uh, the, upcoming, uh, the, the new uh, US administration and also the interna international world, international community can um, continue their fight uh, for, for, the Uyghur, for the Uyghurs. And also there are actually a few specific uh, items that I would like to to the uh, to the uh, Biden administration, uh, um, maybe uh, uh, Hagar, you have heard that the last last summer the Uyghur Human Rights Pol uh, Human Rights Policy Act was uh, passed uh, passed in both uh, parties uh, with with the majority votes, and I would like the 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 new administration to enforce the Uyghur Human Rights Policy Act and uh, ensure that mandated reports to uh, Congress are delivered. And also, I really hope 
the um, the new administration can support the congressional uh, enactment of the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act, which is another another bill. Uh, it was passed in uh, passed the uh, um, um, uh, uh, passed the House, but it didn't pass the Senate. And um, I really do hope that it can be reintroduced and passed eventually. And also, um, I just uh, I am very grateful for the momentum that that has been built in the United States and all around the world. But it is not enough. Um, it's not because I'm not uh, I'm not appreciating with what we have. It's because there are still thousands of hundreds of thousands of Uyghurs are still being locked up. Uh, still, uh, their family members are still not able to know where their parents, where their loved ones, where their children uh, are uh, at this moment, don't know if they're alive. And there are still hundreds of thousands of Uyghurs are forced to work in forced labor uh, factories, uh, uh, in factories as forced laborers, and with very low payment or no payments at all. And I really do hope current this, such situations can be changed. Me too. It's my it's my true hope. And I do think that the I, I believe that the Biden administration will put this at the top of their priority list as well. Um, OK, I have one last question for you, which is how can the regular American, those watching this, uh, if they want to also help the Uyghur cause, what can they do? Um, first, I would want this for uh, not for the Uyghurs, but for people all, of, all around the world. Um, I would like to send out one message, which is cherish what you have, appreciate what you have, and be grateful for what you have, because many people don't, ha don't have access to it, even if they want to. Um, Uyghurs are a perfect example, a very sad and perfect example. And um, also, um, um, I really hope the, uh, the international community uh, can um, support that we just first by the first initial step, which is to, and which is the, also the most crucial step, which is to educate yourself about the situation. And next step is to spreading the words and gather more support uh, from people around you. And, you know, the more voices we have, the louder voices we have, the stronger we are, and um, the better chance we have to change the current, the a situation of the Uyghurs and also just um, that a lot of people say oh I don't know how to help I don't know anyone who works in the government I, I I think I feel powerless I receive messages like this all the time and I want to tell people like you please do not underestimate your power do not underestimate your voices uh, you can help by simply calling your local uh, government representatives and raise your concerns on the over the Uyghur, Uyghur crisis. You can also support the local Uyghur businesses. Um, uh, almost in every state, there are Uyghur businesses such as Uyghur restaurants or um, Uyghur culture centers or, uh, or bookstores that are owned by Uyghur people or online uh, the boutiques that are owned by Uyghur people or there are organizations that are uh, that are for um, mainly Uyghur solidarity groups such as uh, Uyghur Human Rights Project and also um, also um, Darman Foundation who are created to to support the Uyghur refugees and Uyghur single mothers who who have their husbands locked up in concentration camps and 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 Uyghur Uyghur children who have their parents locked up so they cannot pay for a tu for their tuition. You can help by donating to such channels or uh, for, for those uh, uh, organizations. And also, you know, if you purchase a handcraft uh, item from, from a, an Uyghur person and let them know that you care and let them know that you are aware of the, situ of the situation and it will be a big gesture and a, a big gesture for them. And also, um, um, and tell us about, I know you're working on a film, right? Yes. Um, I am also uh, involved in a project. Um, I have been assisting on a documentary film. And uh, this documentary film will be talking about the human rights abuses that are taking place in China. And one of the storyline is about the Uyghur, uh, Uyghurs. And we have finished most of the filmings, but... Uh, we're trying to wrap up the film by uh, by this year, and we're hoping to release it soon. But we can't do that without people's help. Um, we still need uh, need some funds to wrap up the film, 
and it will be great. It will mean a lot. Every, every, I swear, every penny means a lot and it can actually make a change, uh, like translation work, post-production uh, work. And um, that would be great. And I am also, uh, I, I have published a book in 2015 and I, my, up, my new book will be uh, released in end of this year. So stay tuned. And there are also other great um, we, uh, Uyghurs related stories that uh, uh, in, like in books you can purchase from, you can find it on Amazon from different people. And just, just a, so doesn't have to be supporting just me. You can support anyone <laughs> as you wish. And it will mean a lot because Uyghurs, uh, doesn't matter if it's me or anyone, we're all the same. We all share the same nightmare. Um, but um, and if uh, your help will mean a lot to us. And tell us just very quickly before we end, uh, where can people find you on uh, Twitter, for example, so that they can support your film and and know, and learn more about your book? Um, people can either follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Uh, my Twitter handle is jawhar.ilham, J-E-W-H-E-R dot I-L-H-A-M. And my Instagram is J-E-W-H-E-R-R-R. Uh, you can, or just Type in Jawhar Ilham, you can still, you can also find me. I read every message. I read every comment. I might not get to get back to you on time, but I do get back to every single person eventually. And I am happy to answer any questions or concerns you have. I'm happy to share relevant sources and, and answer any of your questions. Wonderful. All right. Well, Johar, thank you so much for joining me. It means the world. And I am praying for your father's release. And thank you so much for the work that you do. Thank you so much, Hagar.